Hello and welcome to the Only Connect semi-finals. Yes, we're in the home straight towards the deciding of this year's championship, which means so much to everyone involved. Remember last year's winners is the very difficult tie-break question I'll be asking in the event of a draw. We're all very excited here in the studio. Let's meet the first contenders for this year's final. On my right, Jeremy Partington. A civil servant who visited the set of A View to a Kill while the crater which blew up Grace Jones was still smouldering. Chris James, a software developer who used to live next door to the original lead singer of Iron Maiden. And their captain, Jonathan Carter, a civil servant who's been down a salt mine in Poland, a silver mine in the Czech Republic and a coal mine in County Durham. United by a fondness for well-tended shrubbery, they are the Surrealists. Jonathan, your team has not lost a single game on the way here. How's your team faring as the pressure mounts? Well, it's been so surreal. I think we've broken through and come out the other side where it's all too wearingly real. <laughs> Tonight, you are facing, on my left, Phil Stiles, a secondary school teacher who's had a total of 104 children living in her house at various times. Tom Kappelman, a software engineer who spent several consecutive nights sleeping in a graveyard. And their captain, Graham Cole, a computer sciences graduate who designed a logo for a teletext page that was used for the next ten years. United by a love of language, they are the verbivores. Now, this is a rematch. You've met at tonight's opposition once before, and you suffered a defeat on that occasion. How are the team spirits tonight? Well, we thought to, to maximise our chances today, we ought to spend the, the previous night swatting up with encyclopedias and quiz books and so on. Then we decided it would be a lot more fun to go bowling, so we did that instead. Excellent. That'll get you right in the mood. Let's bowl a few questions at these teams. You won the toss, Surrealist, but you decided to put your opponents in first. So, verbivores, please choose a hieroglyph. Lion, please. OK. The first question of this year's semi-finals will be the lion question. Your first clue is coming in now. Next. Detective. C. S. Yeah. Next. Influenza. Oh, tech. Yes, a detective can be produced a tech. So it can be so for what may be abbreviated to. A common abbreviation of these words have been removed from the words. Very well spotted. You didn't need the last clue. Earbeth, from which Liz has been removed. Oh, Elizabeth. Okay. What words are we looking at? Uh, detective, influenza, and the first one? I'm not sure. Prescription. You can say script for prescription. That's come out of prescription. Yeah. Tech out of detective, flu out of influenza, and Liz out of Elizabeth. Very well spotted. Well done. Abbreviations have been taken out. Surrealists, what would you like? Uh, twisted flax, please. Twisted flax. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Anything? Next, please. Next, please. Oh, it's the first. first this is the first, first kiss, kiss of a particular kind. Yeah, first kisses. Yeah. First kisses. Uh, first kisses. Well, I will take it. There's an interesting fact about the last clue that you haven't seen yet. That's about to come up now. But yes, May Irwin and John Rice. Do you know what that is? That's very early film, film. The first film. Okay. That's one of the first kisses we know about on film. Thomas Edison filmed a scene from a musical that had a kiss in it, and uh, that was terribly controversial. The next one, Jack Powell and David Armstrong. What's that? That must be the first male kiss on film somewhere. 
Of course, we don't know everything that's no. on film, but the first or one of the first kisses between two men, it's a Clara Bow movie, and the two men are competing for her affections, and they kiss each other in a very manly way, but still a little controversial at the time. Beth Jordash and Margaret Clements from Brookside, a, a lesbian kiss that was uh, very much talked about and actually used, I think, at the beginning of the Olympics. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because people were, were very proud of that one. And let's have a look at the last clue. Star Trek, yeah. No, interracial. First interracial kiss, wasn't it, I think, on... Except that it wasn't, you see. There had been an interracial kiss on a TV play for Granada, You in Your Small Corner. That was quietly the first interracial kiss on TV, but thought to be the first one. Is this from Star Trek? Thought to be the first kiss. Very well done. Verbivores, what would you like? Eye of Horus, please. Eye of Horus. You're going to see some picture clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Next. Next. David Bowie. Uh, is that Liam Gallagher? Um, I don't know. They've done two acts. Just because I don't know about anything else. Two seconds. Uh, is the surname of one the last, the first name of another? The surname of one is not the first name of another, I'm afraid. Surrealist, you want to have a go for a bonus point? They both have this, the same real name. The whole name is the same. Their birth names are the same. Who are we looking at? Stuart Granger and James Stewart, Michael Douglas and uh, Michael Keaton, mm -hmm. Katy Perry and uh, Elizabeth Hudson. Uh, Kate Hudson. Kate yeah. Hudson, yeah. David Bowie and David Jones. David Jones. David Bowie and Davy Jones. Yes, Davy Jones, very much the Liam Gallagher of the 1960s. <laughs> That's right. The person on the left was born with the same name as the person on the right, but they changed it to avoid confusion. So James Stewart became Stuart Granger, Michael Douglas became Michael Keaton, and so on. Surrealists, what would you like? Horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Anything? Next, please. Next, please. Renee and Renato. What's their song? Nice, nice, Renato. Renato. Next. Next, please. Renee and Renato. 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 Those are singers of the. Uh, in the Seconds. They're all uh, singers of the Four Tops. These are the Four Tops. That's absolutely right. The Motown Vocal Quartet, the Four Tops. And these are the four. Very well done. Verbivores, what would you like? Two reads, please. Two reads? Water, well, please. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, I'm afraid. It is the lovely music question. You'll be hearing your clues. What connects them? Here's the first. <laughs> Next. Coldplay. Uh, X&Y. Is X&Y? Next. So, uh, Two seconds. Letters of the alphabet. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, Surrealists, would you like to have a go for a bonus point? Clocks. Clocks is the answer. What did we hear? Was the first one Haydn's Clock Symphony? I, I mean, it's officially Haydn's wow. Symphony number 101, but it's known as the Clock Symphony because of the ticking throughout one of the movements. What else? Um, the last third one, one was Coldplay. Coldplay, Clocks. Clocks. The last one was Rock Around the Clock, wasn't it? Rock Around the Clock, Bill Haley in the comments, and the second one was The Syncopated Clock. Clocks is the answer for a bonus point. And your question now, water. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Why? Next. 
Thanks, please. What's that? Oh, the next one after that is Hamlet. Um, yeah, but they must Hampton all have... Hall, isn't it? No. no, it's between Hammersmith. Yeah, but what's the... <coughs> next, please. Wh which one is it, then? It's not a sequence. No, but... Two seconds. Q. 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 The answer is Q. You don't have to write it down, so it doesn't matter how you spell it. <laughs> how would you spell it in these various clues? Um, that must be C U E in the first one. That first one, it's a term from psychology and biology, a Q that and prompts then, an organism to make inferences. Q U E U E. That's right, that's the, the second K complicated one. K E W. That's Q bridge. And then just Q. And the letter Q is the least common in the OED. All sound alikes of Q. Well done. That means at the end of round one, the verbivores have two points, the surrealists have six. <laughs> On to round Q, the sequences round, or two as some people call it. You'll be going first again, verbivores, which hieroglyph would you like? Horn viper, please. The horn viper. OK, you'll be seeing the first in a sequence of pictures. What would you expect to see in the fourth picture? The time starts now. Next. 18. Is that, is it only a double? D-A-R-T. A dart in the 20. Is the right answer. <laughs> Very well done. So you've spotted what's going on in this fiendish sequence. Talk me through it. It's, uh, the fourth letter of the alphabet is D, the first is A, the 18th is R, and the 20th is T, and it spells out dart. That's right. This is uh, very much up your street, isn't it? It's a clever letter question, but deeply disguised on a dartboard, so very well spotted there. T is the right answer to spell out the word dart. Back to you, Surrealists, for a sequence choice. Uh, I have Horus, please. OK. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. 1381. Next, next, please. One. No, that's before the Spanish unlocked. So would that be? So we could think it could be something that happened. Still be eighty. So I think it could be nineteen eighty-one. What do you want? Next, yeah. next, seventeen eighty-one. Next, please. So what happened in nineteen eighty-one? Um, the assassination attempt on Reagan. Was that? Um. Was that definitely 1981? Yes, something that happened yes. in 1981. Something that happened in 1981. <laughs> well, think. that's the right answer, but I'd like an example. Assassination attempt of Ronald Reagan or the Pope. Both those assassination attempts were in 1981. Uh, Charles and Diana's wedding would be the cheerier example <laughs> yeah. that we were thinking of, but that's right. And what were the years of these other things? So, 1381, 1581, 1781 and 1981, so going up in 200s. That's right. The Battle of Yorktown was the last major battle in the American War of Independence. We're jumping 200 years each time, something from 1981. For example, a wedding or an assassination attempt, <laughs> depending on your outlook on life. <laughs> Verbivores, back to you for a choice. Twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. OK, what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. I wonder, I wonder if there's another word for a star, isn't it? Planet. Oh, sorry, no, you're right, yes, sorry, planet, yes. Um, but next. Oh, is this, is it, is this the, logos or something? Is it, it, it going to be the Audi symbol? Yeah. Yeah, because like that, that means a planet, so that, that, I don't know what watch is, but should we just say four rings on the Audi? Yeah. yeah. Four rings, Audi. Four rings, Audi is the right answer. And why? Uh, the just successive numbers of rings. Uh, the first one, I think, it says the symbol for a planet, which is which is otherwise called a wanderer. What it is, the four rings symbolise four different car companies that merged in 1932. Oh. <laughs> wanderer or Wanderer, <laughs> DKW, how have you pronounced them? These are four German car companies that merged and they ended up with Audi. And we're going in reverse alphabetical order. It's not that Audi was particularly the fourth. Audi is also the one you're most likely to guess if you recognise the, the logo. Well done. Back to you, Surrealists, for a choice. Lion, please. Lion. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Eight, eight. 
comma dot dot dot. So it's missing out B C F G H I K M. Next, please. N O P is my S T. So it will be the last one missing is the first one in the next. So I have to do something. I think it's going to stop. Can't see it. Two seconds. Um, T, X, uh, so T, comma, dot, 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 X, comma, dot, 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 Z. Is the right answer. Do you have any idea why? Because <laughs> I'm missing out on some letters. We do along sometimes the way. have that. It's an amazing thing about the brain. Sometimes people give an answer and it's right and they don't even know why. And sometimes your unconscious mind has noticed something. Sometimes it's a coincidence. I'm going to tell you the letters that are missed out. Have a quick think whether they have anything in common. Let's see. B C F H I K N O P S U V W Y. They are elements. Oh. Ah. We have removed all, all the, the letters that symbolise chemical elements and left only the letters that are not elements. So taking out Thanks. V, vanadium, W, tungsten, Y, yttrium, we get T, X, Z. Maybe a hypnotist could regress you <laughs> yeah. to the moment in your life when you knew that, that, that the inner voice told you T, X and Z were the answers. <laughs> Spooky. Back to the people who sleep in graveyards. <laughs> Verbivores, what would you like? Water, please. Water. OK, what will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. It's the examples in a game Scrabble. Horn, farm... I it's in, 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 in the box, these are the example words, aren't they? We're going to we have to see that. Next. written vertically. Not the answer, I'm afraid. Surrealists, do you know? Um, no. Moat. No. If you don't know, you can't work it out. No. You are absolutely right. This is from the sample game from the official rules of Scrabble. They show you how to play Scrabble by putting some words out, and the next word is mob. Oh. It's played from the M of farm, and it makes not and be, using the N from horn and the E from paste. Mob is the next word. Well done for recognising the sequence, if not remembering the word. So no bonus for you, Surrealists, but you may have a question. The two reads. It's a music sequence, I'm delighted to say. Which piece of music would you expect to come forth? Here's the first. It's the, so it's the last night of the palms. So, so it finishes with the end of hope and glory. That's it. Yes. And then... It finishes with Land of Heaven and Glory, shall I? Next, please. Maybe yeah, because that's green. Yeah, that's all they do. Then it's Royal Britannia. Then it's, then it's a sea song. Or is it, Royal, is it sea songs? No, sea songs with green sleeves. It must be Land of Hope and Glory. Oh, so we've got Land of Hope and Glory. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So I'm going to play a blast of the third piece to the Verb of Wars for a possible bonus point. Have you ever seen something? Well, the Welsh, isn't it? What else have we had? What I need an answer. Uh, the national anthem. Not it, I'm afraid. You're thinking of the proms, aren't you? Yeah. That's not what it is. Not what it is. It's the UK theme. Oh. Radio 4 oh. always used to begin with the UK theme. Horrifically, they dropped it a while ago for sort of news, because we don't get enough news. <laughs> but it used to be that, and the far section is made up of. What should we do with the drunken sailor? Green sleeves, men of Harlech, and then Scotland the Brave. Oh. Scotland the Brave. People at home will be aching to hear it, but we don't have it to play. I think, though, we might whistle it. Yeah. Yes. What do you think? Yeah. Can we whistle Scotland the Brave? Yes. That's right. Have a sip of water. Get yourself <laughs> ready for the whistling. <laughs> Warm up. <laughs> Warm up. OK. One, two, three. How's it go? I don't know how it goes. Oh, 
all in different keys. I mean, I could let this go till the end of the show. Absolutely lovely. Scotland the Brave there. Scottish viewers will be thrilled. The rousing sound of that beautiful whistling. No points, though, unfortunately. But I can tell you that at the end of round two, the Verbivores have seven, the Surrealists have ten. On to the connecting wall now, and the Surrealists will be going first this time, so please choose Lion or Water. Uh, lion, please. Lion. Two and a half minutes to solve the Lion Wall, starting now. Um, fish. Right. Fugu. Des. Bats. Foxhall. You can pluck courage, you can pluck flowers. The courage is better. Seems better. Seems better. Castle? Box, box as well. It's a prince, it is a beer. Castle? Try that, yeah. Volvo? So they may option? be they may, they may all be green. It's a Dutch. Dutch oven, Dutch auction. Dutch, Dutch courage. Dutch cat, no. Jumbo. They must be dangerous. Bean stalk. So what do you say? Dutch cat, Dutch cat, Dutch poultry. Fly leaf. Jumbo, umbo. Not stalk. There are parts of flowers. Stalk, umbo, leaf. Another part cap. What's the word? Bean store, 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 store. 30 seconds. Up of the wall has frozen, but you found a group in this difficult semi final wall. What can you tell me about this blue group starting Fugu? Fish. They're all uh, fish. That's the fish. They're all fish. And you can still get points for the connections in the groups you didn't find, so let's resolve the wall. There we go. Stalk, umbo, cap, parts vulva. Of parts, of parts of a flower? Now, it's not a flower, but a mushroom. mushroom. I think a flower yeah. doesn't have an umbo, but all bits of a mushroom. And the pink group, Oven, Courage, Auction, Leaf. They can all follow the no, word no. Dutch. Yeah, sure. You can put Dutch before all of them. Brewers. And the last turquoise group, yeah. starting yeah. Vo or Vox or Vox. Beers or breweries. Uh, they are beers and the breweries that make them. That's absolutely right. So you found one group and you told me three connections. That is a total of four. Let's bring in the Verbivores now, give them the other connecting wall and see what they can do with it. Two and a half minutes to solve the water wall, starting now. Sargasso Sea. Sargasso Sea. Any other seas? Irish Sea? Dog Sea? Oh, I don't know about that. I've lost the sea. Um, the Labdor. Um, uh, uh, is, 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 is there a Labdor Sea? Seaweed, maybe? Irish Moss? Uh, yeah, Labdorak. Sargasso. Um, oh, Sargasso is a seaweed as well, yes. Um, yeah. Rack, Irish Moss. Any other weeds? Tangleweed. Oh, right, um, so, uh, Labrador, dog, uh, Isle of Dogs, perhaps? No. Uh, are these kings, Labrador King, Harry King, Stephen King? Oh, oh, oh sorry, I thought, I thought you put something in the words. It was a King Larry. Um, King, Larry King, Rodney King. King, Rodney King. Uh, any other kings? Uh, there might be an Earl King, might there? But those aren't names, are they? Let's do it. Oh, we've got one. That's quite <laughs> Three lives now. Uh, right. Pink, Stephen. Um, What's Warden? I don't, I don't, I don't know what Warden is. Is this some surname or uh, Imperial, Imperial March? Uh, so we could still have seeds, Bothnian Sea, Irish Sea, Warden Sea, then, which all seed might be it. Bothnian, so, Irish, Warden, Labrador. Warden might be. 
It's half a bottle of water. What do, you, what do we think the others might be? Uh, it's mint. It's, it's not mint. Stephen mint. Stephen mint. mint, Stephen mint. <laughs> well, should we try Labrador just? Yeah. Oh, that's it. You've solved the wall. Very well done. So that's four points for the groups, and I'm going to ask you about the connections, and I will be wanting specific answers in this semi-final. Tell me about the first group, starting Irish moss. Types of seaweed. They are types of seaweed <laughs> or marine algae. Well done. And the green group, Earl, Larry, Rodney, Carol. King. They are all kings. What about the next pink group? They are seas. I need more. They are seas. Are they around the British Isles? Are they European? They are around Europe. They are not the Labrador Seas between Canada and Greenland. They are seas of the North Atlantic. Oh. That's what I needed to hear. And the turquoise group starting dog. Mint. Let's say mint. The word is not mint, but pound. Dog pound, imperial pound, pink pound, and Stephen pound, who's an MP. But you found all four groups. You told me two connections. That is a total of six. Let's have a look at the overall scores. The verbivores have 13 points. The surrealists have 14. So it could be anyone's game as we go into the missing vowels round that will decide the first place in the final. Fingers on positive teams, I can tell you that the first group are all cookery books. Verbivores. Mastering the art of French cooking. Correct. Surrealists. The naked chef. Yes, it is. know this one it's one is fun next clue surrealists how to be a domestic goddess correct next category film titles merged with american states Verbivores. high school music california well done surrealists there's something about maryland correct Surrealists. The night before Christmas, Massachusetts. I'm afraid it's not. Verbivores, do you know? The night before Christmas, Massachusetts. That's not it either. It's the nightmare before Christmas, Massachusetts. Next clue. Surrealists. Gone with the wind. Too long, I'm afraid. Verbivores, do you Gone know? Gone with the windiana. Gone with the windiana. Next category, types of rock. Verbivores. Sedimentary. Sedimentary is the right answer, and after an exciting and hotly contested round four, I can reveal that the winners, and through to the final with 17 points, are the Verbivores. <laughs> Very well done to you, and a close second with 15 points, it's the Surrealists. Very unlucky, Surrealists, you've been a brilliant team, and a pleasure to have here. I'm okay. sorry to say goodbye. Well done to you, Verbivores. You are <laughs> through to the final. <laughs> <So> unexpected. <laughs> Good luck there. And before we go, I'm excited to reveal that Only Connect has just come second in a poll to name the greatest quiz shows of all time, second only to the classic Bullseye. We are honoured to be in such exalted company, and as a tribute to that great show, next week the teams will be competing for a small bronze bully. That's right, I'm getting a fake tan. Goodbye. The second semi-final of Only Connect is on Friday at 8.30 here on BBC Two. Shy and fiercely private, painter Paula Rigo opens up about her turbulent life and powerful art tonight on BBC Two, Secrets and Stories at Nine. The next this afternoon, Gardener's World. Hello and welcome to the Only Connect semi-finals. Yes, we're in the home straight towards the deciding of this year's championship, which means so much to everyone involved. Remember last year's winners is the very difficult tie-break question I'll be asking in the event of a draw.
We're all very excited here in the studio. Let's meet the first contenders for this year's final. On my right, Jeremy Partington, a civil servant who visited the set of A View to a Kill while the crater which blew up Grace Jones was still smouldering. Chris James, a software developer who used to live next door to the original lead singer of Iron Maiden. And their captain, Jonathan Carter, a civil servant who's been down a salt mine in Poland, a silver mine in the Czech Republic and a coal mine in County Durham. United by a fondness for well-tended shrubbery, they are the Surrealists. Jonathan, your team has not lost a single game on the way here. How's your team faring as the pressure mounts? Well, it's been so surreal. I think we've broken through and come out the other side where it's all too wearingly real. <laughs> Tonight, you are facing, on my left, Phil Stiles, a secondary school teacher who's had a total of 104 children living in her house at various times. Tom Kappelman, a software engineer who spent several consecutive nights sleeping in a graveyard. And their captain, Graham Cole, a computer sciences graduate who designed a logo for a teletext page that was used for the next ten years. United by a love of language, they are the verbivores. Now, this is a rematch. You've met uh, tonight's opposition once before, and you suffered a defeat on that occasion. How are the team spirits tonight? Well, we thought to, to maximise our chances today, we ought to spend the, the previous night swatting up with encyclopedias and quiz books and so on. Then we decided it'd be a lot more fun to go bowling. So we did that instead. Excellent. That'll get you right in the mood. Let's bowl a few questions at these teams. You won the toss, Surrealist, but you decided to put your opponents in first. So, verbivores, please choose a hieroglyph. Lion, please. OK, the first question of this year's semi-finals will be the lion question. Your first clue is coming in now. Next. Detective. C. I. S. Yeah. Next. Influenza. Oh, oh tech. Yes, a detective can we produce, produce a tech. So you can use them for what we've abbreviated to. A common abbreviation of these words have been removed from the words. Very well spotted. You didn't need the last clue. Earbeth, from which Liz has been removed. Oh, Elizabeth. Okay. What words are we looking at? Uh, detective, influenza, and the first one? I'm not sure. It's prescription. You can say script for prescription. That's come out of prescription. Tech out of detective, flu out of influenza, and Liz out of Elizabeth. Very well spotted. Well done. Abbreviations have been taken out. Surrealists, what would you like? Uh, twisted flax, please. Twisted flax. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Anything? Next, please. Next, please. Oh, it's the first. first, first band, it's it's the first kiss, kiss of a particular kind. Yeah, first kisses. Yeah. First kisses. Uh, first kisses. Well, I will take it. There's an interesting fact about the last clue that you haven't seen yet. That's about to come up now. But yes, May Irwin and John Rice. Do you know what that is? That's very early film, film. The first film. Okay. That's one of the first kisses we know about on film. Thomas Edison filmed a scene from a musical that had a kiss in it, and uh, that was terribly controversial. The next one, Jack Powell and David Armstrong. What's that? That must be the first male kiss on film somewhere. Of course, we don't know everything that's no. on film, but the first or one of the first kisses between two men, it's a Clara Bow movie, and the two men are competing for her affections, and they kiss each other in a very manly way, but still a little controversial at the time. Beth Jordash and Margaret Clements from Brookside, a, a lesbian kiss that was uh, very much talked about, and actually used, I think, at the beginning of the Olympics, yeah. yes. uh, because people were, were very proud of that one. And let's have a look at the last clue. Star Trek, yeah. No, interracial. First interracial kiss, wasn't it, I think, on... Except that it wasn't, you see. There had been an interracial kiss on a TV play for Granada, You in Your Small Corner. That was quietly the first interracial kiss on TV, but thought to be the first one. Is this from Star Trek? Thought to be the first kiss. Very well done. Verbivores, what would you like? Eye of Horus, please. Eye of Horus. You're going to see some picture clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Next. 
next? Oh, we've got to run through these, aren't we? Um, <laughs> Next, David Bowie, uh, is that Liam Gallagher? Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know, they've done two rounds. Just because I've done two rounds, but I think Alpha's doing it. Two seconds. Uh, is the surname of one the last, the first name of another? The surname of one is not the first name of another, I'm afraid. Surrealist, do you want to have a go for a bonus point? They both have this, the same real name. The whole name is the same. Their birth names are the same. Who are we looking at? Stuart Granger and James Stewart, Michael Douglas and uh, Michael Keaton, mm -hmm. Katy Perry and uh, Elizabeth Hudson. Uh, Kate Hudson. Kate yeah. Hudson, yeah. David Bowie and David Jones. David Jones. David Bowie and Davy Jones. Yes, Davy Jones, very much the Liam Gallagher of the 1960s. <laughs> That's right. The person on the left was born with the same name as the person on the right, but they changed it to avoid confusion. So James Stewart became Stuart Granger, Michael Douglas became Michael Keaton, and so on. Surrealists, what would you like? Horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Anything? Next, please. Versions or something. Next, please. <coughs> Rene, Rene and Ronaldo. What's their song? No, it's not Ronaldo. Oh, Ronaldo. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Next, please. Those are singers of the. Uh, in the front of the seconds. They're all uh, singers of the Four Tops. These are the Four Tops. That's absolutely right. The Motown vocal quartet, the Four Tops. And these are the four. Very well done. Verbivores, what would you like? Two reeds, please. Two reeds? Water, well, please. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, I'm afraid. It is the lovely music question. You'll be hearing your clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Next. Coldplay. Uh, X and Y? Is X and Y? Next. 